Good afternoon, people. How are we doing? Bork Ben Bork. 30 months of subbing. Thank you so much. Appreciate that. Brooks, let's have a talk. Let's get these cheerleaders off of here. I'm talking to Jonathan Brooks and Jonathan Brooks alone. You need to find the rest of those pictures. You need to find those pictures temporarily. Temporally awry. Stream giveaway. Let's do it. Missed y'all this week. I missed being here yesterday. My kids' last week of school is this week. It's been a nightmare, but today's it. Um, my wife is picking up my daughter right now, and then school's over. It's hot mess, straight up mess. All right, let's do let's do a giveaway. Um, so I was cleaning up in here yesterday. And I have a box of old field notes. So we're gonna grab a, we're gonna grab a, uh, we're gonna grab an old field notes. I put them all in the ice box of happiness. I put about twenty or thirty um, packs of field notes in here. So let's give away an unopened pack. Oh, there's me, Inception. Unopened pack of unexposed. Welcome, Mo Designs things. Duck of prey. Fourteen months of subbing. Thank you so much. Hello, hello, hello. Yeah, so Brooks, you gotta find those pictures. I wanna see the I wanna see some more closer uppers. Pretty cheeky putting up the opus during quals last weekend. Didn't think about that. I'm I am a cheeky guy though. I am a cheeky. I'm a cheeky, cheeky one. Naper villain, 18 months of subbing. Thank you so much. Appreciate you. Y'all are awesome. Thanks for being here today, chat. It has been a week, that's for sure. <laughs> All right, let's do this giveaway. Naughty Zoot. Oh, my God. <coughs> ten, ten gifted subs. Naughty Zoot. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, I really, really appreciate that. That's amazing. Ten gifted subs to the community. That is too kind and so nice. I, I really appreciate that. Um, Enjoy your emotes. Give a shout out to Naughty Zoot. Very amazing here. Still miss the podcast, but I'm here now. But we're gonna do. We had a giveaway, so we're trying to uh, we're trying to give this away quickly. Here, right in the beginning, Stu Mander with the prime sub. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. So we're gonna do field notes unexposed as we bask in the gloriousness of naughty zoots 10 gifted subs thank you so much again i really really appreciate you it was really really great miss kimber bright spot in your day yes yeah, sorry i couldn't be here yesterday like i literally started the stream and then realized like i was already late it was just madness madness yesterday so apologies for even starting the stream and thinking i could go and then i realized that that was a nightmare so couldn't do it I know, I know. We're trying to get it in. All right, let's give it away. So we have a Field Notes Unexposed Edition giveaway. I just, I put in a bunch, all of my extra Field Notes in the uh, ice box. So go uh, exclamation point raffle to enter to win. Anyone can win. You don't have to be a follower, subscriber, member. You don't have to live in the United States. You just have to be cool and you have to be, you have to reply to this. If you win, you have to be present to win and then you have to email me your shipping address. 69 people watching. Nice. And that's the price of the Opus, uh, if you're a Penac member, 69 buckaroonies. How about that deal? That's a deal. Um, what was I going to say? I have not started shipping because my back has been wrenched since Saturday. So I'm hoping to start this afternoon. Just off to the left is the heating pad that I've been using for days. <clears throat> Missed the podcast too? Yeah. <laughs> podcast podcast is cool to hang in the live stream it's 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 good to uh it's good to just listen to it after the fact this is cooler to hang out at pick a ball ng no about once or twice a year i just kind of wrench my back and this wasn't as bad as before um it just makes me feel like an old man and like i hate feeling like an old man so it's just one of those things so now like today's pretty good like i'm getting around good today i'm gonna start shipping today or mm, at least tomorrow at least tomorrow, I'm going to start shipping. I'll try to sh ship a few things uh, today. But not too much. 
and not wouldn't a pickleball mishap this time. This time, I have broken myself playing plenty of times though, but it's preventing me from playing, which is annoying. Everything looks so tidy atop the ice box. Well, yeah, I got some stuff I gotta figure out. I gotta figure out what I'm gonna do here with some some stuff. Um, I still have like all my books and accessories kind of sitting over here, so. I did my back the other day, too hurt, bad in my ribs. That was hard to breathe, getting better though. My sister-in-law is a physio, so gonna get her to do a bit of work. Where's Pikachu? Uh, on my other desk in the bedroom right now. So, yeah, it's looking uh, it's looking a little bit better, but uh, we'll see. I mean, not much needs to be up there, but I, I like something in the background. And again, that's why I haven't worked on the pictures for over here yet. Like, I gotta get all this stuff done. Are you gonna sell me a witch pin? Hmm. Rocking the horizontal stripes. Yeah, this is one of my shirts that I won. See, sometimes I win I win exclamation point raffles too. That's where this shirt came from. All right, pick a winner. Greg, Greg T863. Greg, have you ever actually won? Are you a zero former Zero Wins Club member? Greg, or have you actually won? I think you've won. I think you've, maybe? Hmm, now I'm wondering. Now I'm wondering, Greg, if you have actually won. Oh snap. It does look uh, this is very fig booty style. Fig booty style. I have to bring I'll have to bring this shirt to San Francisco so me and Fig Boot can sand in there. Once before? Okay. Gotcha. Well, email me your shipping address and I will unexpose you. So these are cool. I love this edition. I'm getting anxious for cult pins to release the black tortoise show. When's it gonna happen? One week after I join? That's hilarious. Good morning, Queen of Washi. Brad, how come it talks? No one talks about the Twizzleby Precision. It's like an Avenger. Avenger. I I didn't enjoy it. Like I just thought it was very average for the price. Um, it's cool. Um, it was just like maybe like in the top ten or top twenty of that category of pen. So, of uh, pencil, excuse me. So it's never really clicked for me. I might. Did I do a review of one? I might have done a review of one. That's the edition that preceded the Pitch Black Evergreen product, right? Um, no, these are um, these are like the neon. There's neon colors in here, and there were six six neon colors. So there's three of the colors in here, and then three in another set, and it was all like a mix and match type of thing. Like they did it uh, as a joke to the collectors. Like if you got to collect them all, you're gonna have to open these to see what's in them. <laughs> So yeah, there you go. Yeah, I, they're really neat. They're really, really cool. Twisby Precision Fountain Pen. Oh, I don't think I've used the fountain pen. I was thinking of the pencil. I don't think I don't think I've ever used the fountain pen. I don't know, it's just a big chunky fountain pen, right? I saw Kirby's pictures with Brooks. That had to be amazing. Yeah, I'd have to look at the Twisby Precision Fountain Pen again. I think it's probably just like a cost thing, like relative to their other products. I think it's a little bit more expensive, but I don't know. I don't know why that one doesn't get the love. I know the Classic doesn't get the love because there were so many technical flaws with that one and it ended up being kind of a mess. But the Precision Fountain Pen, yeah, I've actually forgot about that. So excited she barfed, that's too funny. Hopefully right on Brooks's lap, maybe. That would be great. And then Brooks could make a barf on my trousers material uh, for his next next pin. I'm sure he's, I'm sure Brooks has some uh, barf tastic uh, material rods. It's like the Levenger L Tech. Oh, in New York City, went to Fountain Pen Hospital trying to get to your second. Nice, nice, nice. How would you like Fountain Pen Hospital? It's a strange. It's a strange setup in there, isn't it? But they have some awesome stuff. It is a really primary regurgitation. Oh my God, poor Penman, that's it. Am I ready to meet Kirby and be barfed on? Yes, I'm down with that. I am down with that. Primary regurgitation. Write that down, Brooks, there you go. This is what we do here. We, uh, 
we answer all your product creation questions. So there you go. Now, if Brooks doesn't have a primary regurgitation, we're just going to have to yell at him. That's the way it is. Barf on Queen of Washi too. Oh my gosh. That Sandman material pen by Brooks was so sick. Yeah, I've yelled at him to get us more pictures. We're going to have to do that. <clears throat> we want more pictures, fam. Kirby, I love you. Please don't barf on you. <laughs> yes, it's strange, but nice, isn't it? Like that's a when I walk, I didn't know what to expect going into Fountain Pen Hospital, but whatever it is, it wasn't that. <laughs> if you haven't been to Fountain Pen Hospital, you go in. It's like got a big you know awning, like a standard like one unit uh, at the bottom of a building uh, space, and then the storefront brings you in like this into a taper. And there's just like stuff, like really nice stuff here. And then like the counter where they check you in. And then it you go kind of got to go work your way through the taper. And then it opens up back. And then they have like the like the other, like the mini storefronts in there, like the like the Aurora section or the Mont Blanc section. And it's it's nice. It's a cool place, but it's it's unique in design and layout. So speaking of where's Brooks right now, he is in here somewhere. He was in here when we started the stream this morning. But is he back home? That I don't know. I think so. It's definitely a bit of bigger on the inside. Yeah, and even like the smaller sections, they have great stuff in them. Like it's it's hard to um, it's hard to explain if you haven't been there. <clears throat> and it's definitely worth the trip. It is worth the trip. We got taken when we got to visit, we got taken down into the basement there. And the amount of storage of old like fountain pen parts they have there is mind blowing. Like they just have drawers and drawers full of parts. Like I don't even know how much like money worth of parts of inventory sitting in down there. And like that's where they do some of their sales from. Like bag of parts. It's like here. It's just like wow, it's crazy. I was only a newbie when I went. I wish I still lived in my city to visit again. It's worth a it's worth a special trip. So I'll be interested to see what you think about Yoseka. I have not been to Yoseka. Um, which I hope to one day. That would be cool. I would love to uh, get up there and meet everybody and hang out. What looks like a beautiful, beautiful store. All right, so on today's podcast, which is now in your feeds somewhere, Brad, what do you think of the clear yellow Twisby launching in June? I like it. Like, it's really cool. Like, it fits in with the rest of their stuff. So, yeah. Like, you know, I wonder how long it can last, right? Like, it's another good-looking one. It goes in with like the green and the pink, purple. What else was in there? Listening while driving home. Nice. That can't be safe. Don't don't uh, don't do anything we wouldn't do. So yeah, like it's fine. It's like, are we gonna get to the end of la the line eventually? What else are we gonna do new? I I wish they would continue with that. I would rather see that yellow and like a JD type material, right? But it fits in with what they've done in the past, and I think the color is really good. So. I just like pens with the three months of subbing. Let's go. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. All right. So show and tell from today's podcast. Y'all, if, if you've been here any length of time or you listen to the podcast any length of time, you've seen all this stuff I'm about to show you. But Mike and I, apparently, twice over the history of the podcast, once in 2012, once in 2017, went through our top five fountain pens. Um, I don't think I have follow age uh, uh, set up as your limits. I should set that up. Um, so I don't have those lists. The 2012 one, I'm sure, was probably like Lamy Safari, Pilot Vanishing Point, Pilot Prera. I don't know what else. I don't know what 2012 could have been. 2017 is probably interesting. Um, so... That would be cool to kind of go back and listen to. And then now this set, so five years on, we had an email or say, hey, I was listening five years ago. You did this and five years ago you did you did it the first time. So how about a five-year update? So we did that today on the show. What I've noticed is the retailers of Narwhal are saying they will have the yellow Twisby. Interesting. That, interesting. That's an interesting one. Visionaire, Visionaire would have been in the first one. <laughs> so I thought since I... When I talk about things on the podcast, I have to have them handy, right? I just, I have to have the visual 
talking about so I can have it in my hand and kind of messing around with it. Um, so but I'm in no particular order here, I, I get all these out. If I were a vendor, I would ignore the letter. Well, it's just that you wouldn't be able to reorder them. That's the thing, Rattler Gen. You can sell them. You can sell your inventory. But will Twisby look at an order from Pen Shop X and say, no, they carry Narwhal. I will therefore reject this order. That's that's more what we're thinking about here. Um, so this is the Pilot Custom 912 posting nib with the Maquille artwork on it that um, Mike Masuyama's friend did for about a minute until he realized he wasn't charging enough and now no longer does it. So, uh, again, I got five pins here, no particular order, but you will see, you will see some theme going through this. Um, I don't know. I am spoiling your podcast. Spoiler alert for the, uh, the podcast today. If you haven't, uh, yeah, are they actually going to follow through? That's a good, good point. Who knows, right? So spoilers ahead. If you haven't seen, the, if, you, if you haven't heard the podcast, this is what I talk about on the podcast today. These five pins. But if you've been here any amount of time, you probably could have picked the five pins yourself. Let's be honest. Good morning, Chada. Um. So yeah, this is my posting nib, which is one of my favorite nibs to use. It's kind of got that hook in there. If you're not familiar with the posting nib, it's a very fine, firm nib. And then this was just a standard black barrel pen that was sent off to have this artwork done on it. So would this be in my top five pens if it didn't have the artwork on it? I don't know. It would be it would be pretty close because I enjoy the PO nib that much. It would be pretty darn close. But it might have gotten pipped by like a, a sailor or something like that if it didn't have the artwork on it. But it, since it's got the artwork on it, it's kind of like even more, more special. Speaking of artwork, this one came like this. I don't use this pen enough, and I should. Um, once I get those, once I get the, um, how does one find a pen with that nib on it? So you have to find certain pilot models that sell the whole range of nibs on there, like the 15 nib options. It's one of those, but it's not that common. It's starting to become more available. So what models have it? The 823, the 912, 743. Those are the choices, I think for that nib it's my favorite pen and mine's just black with no maquillage yeah like i think it's kind of like the perfect size and shape for a pen like this is why i want this to be pilot's platform pen so i would really this is the one i want them to make like an orange barrel in and a purple barrel in but i discussed why maybe maybe they shouldn't on there so just got to get one and send it to bogomundo yeah JetPens has the 912 with a PO, but it's gray market, so you don't have any warranty with Pilot USA. Has anyone ever used a, um, a manufacturer warranty for their pens? I know Pelican's pretty good at their warranties. I've never had the the need to use the manufacturer warranty. Has anyone here used a manufacturer warranty? I'm sure there has been. Like I've, I've definitely heard of people using Pelican, Pelican's warranty. So this is the uh, Namiki Milky Way. Uh, Arushi Rodden type of stuff. I tried with my Mont Blanc and there were so many hoops it wasn't worth it. Gotcha. Currently have a Diplomat Arrow that I returned under warranty. Cool. I used it once on a Visconti that fell apart. Nice. Oh, my Aurora, I guess, was warrantied, but they might have just done it because I'm a friend. Because I bought it secondhand, so it wouldn't have had the original warranty. <laughs> but I did have to send a pin back to Aurora. My Optima in the Shoptima. Pilot replaced my 823 in the barrel crap. Nice. Nice, nice, nice. Really pleased with my first week of subscribing. Great updates, competitions, awesome pin discount. <laughs> oh, thank you so much, Fuzzy. Like you know, it, it's all downhill from here. That's all I. That's all I gotta ask you. I mean, all I gotta tell you, <laughs> it's all downhill from here. Um, this is kind of a perfect writing pen for me. Size, shape, style. It's beautiful. It's stunning. It's a stock nib. Um, and I will use the Sukio ink cartridges. Um. When I get in there. So the PO is 743, 742, 912. Thank you, Rebuzzles. So the Con 70 gives this pen a great balance. So I'll be interested to see um, if I will like. It'll be a little bit lighter using a cartridge, but I might just use it more because it's convenient. Like this was this pen will, will go to always inked up once I get those cartridges, if I can get those cartridges. 
Mommy refused to take care of my studio when the original blue finish turned to soft touch plastic goo. Ew. Father had a good Mont Blanc warranty experience. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. All right, so that's two fancy, sparkly type. This one's fancy, but less sparkly. This is my AO Tamanuri uh, Nakaya Portable. So black with the kind of the bluish green undertones with a rhodium plating on the nib and a fine nib with a cursive italic grind. So a Japanese fine nib with a cursive italic grind is like my sweet spot for nibs and writing. Yeah, RIP this colorway. So this is, I use this pen pretty regularly. It's not inked up right now, but out of just these three so far, I know I use this one more. I use this one pretty regularly because I will just pop the Pilot Mount Fuji blue, blue black cartridges in here, but I'm not too particular with ink in this one. I'll use, I'll use pretty much anything in this one. Um, you know, within reason, like I'm not using pigmented or sparkly or sparkly inks in it, but like I will, this one doesn't, this one doesn't have a particular ink that lives in it. Like maybe some of the other ones do. Like I've only ever used uh Sukiyo in the Milky Way just because I find it to be like kind of the perfect match for what I want for this pen. These are stunning. Yeah, these are my top five for a reason. They're definitely my favorites. I had a good experience working through drama goals on a mom block warranty. Nice. Penider was great and it took a year to get it back. Yeah, I could see that. Um, next up, the Neil Gaiman pen. So this is the 823. I've been doing, I've been um, experimenting with different inks. I've always used different inks in this. But now this Ito Murasaki is kind of perfect. It looks cool. Uh, here, got your postcard? Nice. We'll do some more postcards maybe next week. So this kind of purple look in here, I've always used different blues, different, I've used everything. I've used orange, I've used green. I think this color is gonna live in here. It's kind of a perfect match for this pen. This one, it needs some Arushi. See, I don't wanna Arushi this one. If I got like a different color, I maybe would. Or maybe just, maybe we can get uh, something here on, on the on the end of the pen. Maybe just like on the black bits, on the top and on the tops of the pen, maybe. Loving the clear barrels that let you see the ink. Yeah, like uh, who was said it just a second ago uh, about all these pens being black. Yeah, these are, this is, for all of the color that I like, this is a very uh, simple, classic looking setup. Although this is, out of all these pens, this is probably the hardest one to get. Just normal. Well, I mean, they don't make the color of this Nakaya anymore, but it was just like a stock Nakaya. Um, hey, Brad, look at cap insert. Boy, y'all in the... Um, in the Slack, y'all were going through everything that had a cap insert, and it was like every pen ever. So this is a Pilot Custom 823. This is just one of the best writing feeling pens on the market, in my opinion. It's just kind of great. Kind of great. And then the last one, wouldn't it wear off the piston area to Arushi? I mean, this is wears off every time I use it, you know, in theory, right? That's like part of the deal. Right, it's all gonna wear if you use the pen. Right. So if I'm touching this to use it, it's it's gonna wear, right? That's just like you sign up for it, right? That's part of the deal. So that's why I like all these pens because like I use all of these pens and, and don't worry too much about wearing them off, scratching, dinging them, dinging them, dinning them. Like if you listen to the podcast today, Mike talks about he has a chip in one of his favorite pens, and it's like it's chipped because I like it so much. I use it all the time. So it's just going to be chipped because I like it, right? Last one, a little bit of an outlier, but if you know me at all, it's not. Um, Pilot Murex. This was, so I think these were my top four. And then picking the fifth one was pretty tough. It was between like the Sailor King of Pen, Pro Gear Sky. Um, you know, maybe like the uh, Sailor Mount Fuji one that I have, or Fujiyama, Fujiyama Blue, I call it Mount Fuji, the Sailor Fujiyama Blue. Yeah, Wabi Sabi, exactly. 
exactly Summerlin Studio. So yeah. <clears throat> hey Sophie's Sophie's choices. So yeah, this is um this is one I definitely only use one ink with. I use pilot blue black cartridges with this one and just go to town on it. So yeah, I probably need to ink up all these pens, but I need to clean some pens before I do. So the so the king of pens sky was actually number six. So that was the last decision point um, here. And see, this is what I get to do now. We get to just go grab it out the tray. So I cheated and I, I did have a six pin. So this was, um, this would have been this. This is my favorite king of pen. Did I tell y'all I had a, a crazy offer on this pen? which is wild. I think I did. I think I talked about it on stream because I don't know where else I'd talk about it. But this is my favorite King of Pen. Um, and it's, this was the choice for the final, for the final spot. It was definitely these four. And then the last spot, if I had could only had to pick five is between these two. <clears throat> How many pilots were uh, there of the five? There were four. There were four of the five. And then I talked about that after the realization that I picked four out of five pilot pens, I had like a little short commentary on that. Um, and maybe why I think it is, I didn't, I didn't, um, I didn't probably explain it as well as I could have um, on the podcast. But yeah, listen to that and tell me what you think. I don't want to spoil the whole show, but yeah, once I came to a realization that I actually picked four pilot pens out of the five I had to I had to have a little think about that so it was really really it was an interesting thought process so let me know what you think about that Murex has to be my number one please manufactured again pen I know Mike keeps pining for the for the M90 the Mu but it's like the M90 is already the redo they're not going to redo an M90 anytime soon I don't think so pilot is the goat though so yeah, like I'm coming to a realization, not that I didn't know that, but it was more of a, um, an understanding of maybe why these fall into the category of top five favorites, while I might have 10 or 15 sailor pins that I love, um, and why they don't make this list, right? It was, it's trying to, trying to sort that out of my head, right? But this was this was definitely number six. I did cheat. I did pick out a six one. So this was the first one out. So yeah, there you go. That would be that's the list. So like who needs more than this? Right? Well, apparently me, because I just bought a box to fit a hundred pens. So I like pilot nibs the best. That's a tougher sell, even though these are let's see. Cust well, not customized, but specific PO. This is stock fine, customized, and just really weird. So they're not necessarily like straight up stock nibs. The top five should get a special pin case that sits on top of the 100. <laughs> I like your thinking, Tam Servo. The top five should be inked up all the time. Like out of the top five, this is the only one that's inked right now. But I go through different things pretty well. Like I use, let's see, I use this the most. I'd say I use this the second most. Third. Fourth. Fifth. I'm not counting this one. I use this one somewhere in between. But I haven't been using this very much because I get annoyed with the Con 70 converter, even though it's great. I should just ink it up and deal with it. I'm looking at doing something similar, but going to set up a rule that I can have no more than one of the top five inked at a time. See, that, that's almost like kind of where I need to be, Mafia Geek, because we got to go through the rest of this and see if I need to keep it, right? Like these pens aren't going anywhere, like ever, right? There's no <laughs> Slumberland Studio. So I'm going to see them in San Francisco, and uh, I might have to come back with like a tray or something, like something small I can travel with. But if they're there, they, there's no way I'm not coming back with something. So, 
Just syringe fill it. Oh, I know. I know Rattler Gen. I do. I do. It's not the filling. It's the cleaning. And I clean it with a syringe too. So once I, I have some pens I need to clean, um, this will be the next pen I ink up. Out of this group, I'm going to ink this one up uh, soon. I love, I love enjoying this. Uh, I am not free today, Brooks, uh, honestly. Uh, but tomorrow I am. Text, text me tomorrow and then we can figure something tomorrow afternoon. Today, I have a, but my whole afternoon is packed this afternoon, scheduled. So tomorrow though, tomorrow afternoon, we'll do something. Definitely. Go be, go be dad and uh, congratulations on a great trip and uh, super proud of you. And uh, I think it's awesome to see. <clears throat> yeah, if I always have the top five ink, then I'll never use anything else, right? So, so I defaulted, I backed into um, your setup, Mafia Geek. So, and like, I don't, I will probably always have one of these inked up, right? I just enjoy it too much to let it sit there. So this is, this will be the next one inked up and that will be really soon. Like I might clean pens this weekend. Like I'll have this inked up by next week. Like I just don't have time today or anything, any time to ink it. But, um, Starman, thank you for the follow. Appreciate you. So, Friend got a 100 pin case that's black with pink inside from them and ooh that's pretty. That would be sick. Like I would be about that if I had if I had like the the black um wood aesthetic back here, I would totally get black and like all pink. Um I don't know, I might have to mix it with blue. That's the problem with five trays. I couldn't do two and two. So much to go over. Nice. I like it. <coughs> so yeah, there's my top 5 plus 1. So um, yeah, here's the question of the top five are great. What are they missing that you need another 95 pins to cover? Isn't that something Evan, right? That's what we're trying to figure out, right? There's really, really, um, just interesting stuff. Like what, you know, inspires you or tickles your fancy today you know, this doesn't have a lot of the bright color stuff that I really enjoy. So sometimes I just need that pink pen or that orange pen that I, I want to enjoy writing with. But they still kind of lag behind these. So yeah, that's I think what we're trying to figure out to, with the whole Panac 100. Thanks for streaming today. Just need to hear a positive voice to be within a community of friends. Yeah, I had a tough day yesterday. I mean, and I think we probably all did. Um, and um, like, it's okay to take time for yourself and to take care of yourself first and for sure for sure glad to be here today uh, i needed i needed it too i needed to hang out with y'all today as long as the other 95 pins spark joy right they can all spark joy like there's some a lot of the pins i have is like they bring up a certain memory i was like oh i remember when i got this why i got it what it was yeah rattler gin you don't want to know if you're in a news blackout stay there so I'm sorry, we're just not going to discuss, we're just not going to discuss specifics here. There's no benefit, but you should continue your news blackout and that's okay. Like it's okay to not worry about the news and it's probably healthy. So, um, I have the Godfather on disc, but I also have clerks and I've also watched clerks at a multiple of the, of the Godfather, of the Godfather, <laughs> right? It is a Bork. Did we have a Bork bet today? Probably no Bork. I didn't see a Bork bet pop up. So, um, but yeah, like it's, I want to be able to have all these pens that I like care about, right? And they don't have to be the number one pen that I own. And the only pen I'll ever use because I enjoy a lot of different things, right? So, there's different times and places for different pens. Um, there's different stories I want to tell. There's different experiences I want to have. That doesn't mean you need 100 pens. <laughs> I mean, it would be nice to only have one pen sometimes, but I'm really not interested in that, right? This is something that I enjoy. So, like, I had to, I had to tell myself it was okay to limit myself to 100 pens. Like, just think about how asinine that statement is right? That I had to tell myself that it was going to be okay 
to limit myself to 100 pins. That's like one of the stupidest things you like I've ever heard of in my life. It's like weird to talk about. But like this is what I do. This is what I get enjoyment from. <clears throat> so, I mean, why not why not do those things that we like and, and enjoy? So, we all have things. I meant to try to stink in an SVPA but didn't get it in. Are there any good hybrid ink refills in the Pilot G G2 style? Um It's a good question. The Acroball is a weird shape. I would have to double check if it fits the if it's hot swappable with the G2. I think the front end is the similar is similar, but the length of it might need like a manual trimming of it, and I don't have one here to do. That's a really good question, and I can't think about. <laughs> know your audience, right? Like we're among friends here, right? <laughs> So, so many worse things to collect and enjoy to excess. Yeah. Like, and that, like, I'm at the point where, like, I am, I have a lot of great stuff, right? Clearly. And if I'm not using stuff, I want to be able to uh, sell it. I almost said be able to snake it, but <laughs> that was right. <rather> gen. <laughs> Better than collecting snakes? I don't know. There's probably an argument to be had for collecting snakes over pens, right? There seems like that could be a, there could be a fair argument there somehow. Hello, oh hello, Toby. Toby, we heard you barking, and he's gone. Uh, family is home from the literal last day of school. Just happened, so my kids are out of school for the summer. I don't know whether to to, to be happy about that yet or not. You have to keep mice as well. It's a huge pain. <laughs> Snakes take up too much room and are more expensive, and they poop. Everyone forgets about forgets about the snake pooping part, right? Snakes, very cool, right up until they poop. Curation is the difference between a collection and a hoard. That's why I call mine a library of pens. If you hear me say library of pens, I don't, I don't, I choose not to use the word collection because collection to me has like a connotation of not using. Whether that's right or wrong, that's just my way of of defining what I have not as a collection um pens won't bite you <laughs> choose pens i don't know we've seen some we've seen some damages uh that's some next level semantics right there yeah we all have to, we all have to make our own our own decisions on how we justify this stuff <laughs> that's mine so i call mine a library because i want to check them in and check them out but they're always there to be used i don't collect pins because that means I just stare at them in my mind, right? That, oh, I'm, that I'm not making a buying decision based around usage. And that's what, that's my preferred way to go about this is to make decisions around things I'm going to use. Even if I cannot possibly use all the stuff that I have, still make the correct decision um, when I buy it. Um, and then, you know, and then change my mind later if it, didn't really work out like that's okay too so pins bite you sh all right directly in the wallet brett it's a curation yeah like curation's cool too that has a little museum-y vibe to it right but i like i still like the word better than collection is the one the collection's the easy word to use but it doesn't really give the explanation that i want brad has a horde of clicky pins and pencils you know i do i have clicky pins and pencils everywhere like let's see we can just grab stuff out of here. Like, look. Here's the... Whoops. Here's the the antithesis of all the expensive pens. Here's the Bit Crystal, the Bit, Bit Click, the Tombow 100, a Blackwing, a Musgrave Harvest. So, yeah. I sort of think of mine as a toolbox, yeah. Toolbox is another good way to put it. Remember, chat, Brad did not like found pens when he started the pen addict. <laughs> Thanks for the memories there, Tess. Thanks for the memories. So, yeah, we like all kinds of pens and pencils here. We're a big fan of the stationery. Not sure if y'all heard. Not sure if y'all heard. We like pens and paper and stationery. All right, here's a question. Here's an Ask TPA question for y'all that I need to answer. <laughs> 
first and last word in pins. All right, here's let's. Um, this is this should be an easy question, but I'm asking you because it's a hard question. Give me your favorite A5 bound notebook dot grid with white paper. Go. I'm gonna start calling my collection a library too. I only have a few pens that I never use. Cheap knockoff stuff I wouldn't even sell. I'm not sure what I'm gonna do with them. Yeah, like that's okay. Yeah. Like I have stuff that like we're gonna figure out tomorrow. We're gonna Rodia is not white in the dot grid bound. Tomoe River paper is it dotted? Masubi Bank is it dotted? Hippo Noto rip. Not wire bound. So I don't. So the dot grid Tomoe River from Galen is white with dot grid. Okay, I'll look at that. Peggy Love, 19 months of subbing. This is a harder question than, than you know. Endless. Is there, okay, how about a non Tomoe River version? Just, is cross grid okay? No, no exceptions. No, no exceptions to the question. So let's look at this Claire Fontaine. Yeah, Quobatis Havana is A5 ish. What is this one? Is this coming dot grid? So this is, I'm looking at this one right now. Are we counting the Masubi reticle as not dot grid? Absolutely, because it's a reticle. What color is the Rhodia? Ivory. Rhodia is very cream. Like in the web notebooks. We're talking about that, we're not talking about the pads. Rhodia pads are white. What exactly is this? This could be interesting. So it does come in dot. And it's got the 192 pages. That's something to look at. The web notes don't count, they're trash. Oops, let me allow that because that's factually correct. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So sidebound, like not it doesn't have to be hardcover, but it's gotta be sidebound like this, right? Yeah, what if okay, so like the color verse ones, okay, that's a good one. The nebula note. Okay, I'm forgetting about the nebula note, and that's a good one. The Odyssey. Odyssey, okay, let me just write a couple of these down before I forget. Stayology is cream paper, yes. Um, so, so what is this actually called? Oh, this is the age bag, I think, I do remember this now. I need to do this as a segment on the show just so we can refer back to it. So this is dot grid. White paper. A5 sidebound. Um, Stalogy is pretty white to me. Definitely more white than the Life Noble or MD. Yeah, Life and MD are definitely not white. Is Stalogy white? Stalogy has dot grid. All right, let me write these things. Odyssey. Does Wright have an A5? I'll look at this theology. Okay, so there's definitely a few options. All right, let me close that off. Chantel, thank you for the follow, appreciate you. 
uh, Nebula Note. That's the one I was missing. Nebula Note's definitely white. I think, right? Right Notepad's classic hardcover. Do they still sell the Right Notepad's classic hardcover? Like, can you actually get that? I haven't tried in a while. But if so, I need to chest one of those out myself. Classic card. Oh, don't worry. Oh, yeah, that is very white on the stylogy. Yeah. Okay. That's cool. I didn't even think about this one. I just assumed it was cream colored for some stupid reason, apparently. That's cool. Naughty Zoot. Okay. Okay, so they still have these. What shape are these? Is it A5? Okay, it's A5. And it comes in dot. Let's see. Of course, Chris took it on page 69. Because, nice. Okay, this is good. There's more than I thought. I think we got some good answers here. Oh, the endless. Oh, let me write down that endless one. And I forgot they did change that paper, didn't they? Okay, we got some pretty good... We got some pretty good suggestions here. I'm looking at my A5 Stylogy and it's definitely not white. <laughs> Thank you, Get Composed, Compost. And now I don't feel crazy. But that picture is, this is definitely white. I know y'all can't really see it on here. It looks pretty white. What do they call it? Sheet color white. But maybe it's a new, maybe it's a new rank. Maybe the editor series is white and the, the classic 365 is ivory. Maybe. I don't know. I'm grasping at straws here. Because I thought for sure they were like ivory cream color type stuff. All right, this is good. So I got one, two, three, four, five, six. I got seven things on here. That's that's good. Including some of the Tomoe River ones, so. Very cool. Good, thank you. Very helpful. Although, I guess it'll be like a month before I talk to Mike again uh, on the show. So we recorded this week's episode. We've recorded next week's episode. The episode after that, I'm going to have a guest and then he'll be back. So it'll be like four weeks before I talk to Mike again. About three weeks before I talk to Mike again. So look for me to forget this note by the time three weeks happens. All right, let's do another giveaway. Then we're probably going to wrap soon because I've been talking a lot this morning. My voice is ready to be done. <clears throat> All right. What can we give away here? We got Greg's. Let's see. Closing the shop all by myself right now. It sounds like free pins to me. I've got free pins all to myself right now. I think that's what I heard you say. All right. We're going to do the silliest giveaway ever. Tell me about the Rotring 600 Lava Fountain Pen. Number one, it's sweet. Worth it? How much do you have to pay? I like I paid like 200 for mine, which that was totally worth it. Um, I think they're probably twice that much now. Um, that, that That's a definitive keeper. And then I... And it has a steel nib, and then I have a Rotring 600 with a gold nib that I think I'm going to sell, right? I would keep the lava. The lava is super unique. Somehow I'm the most expensive employee. <laughs> hmm. All right, we're going to do something funny today. 
Hit mine for 80. It was worth that. Worth 400. I think no. 250. If it's in good shape, 250 is pretty good. Um, they only come... I think the finest nib you can get is maybe a medium. Can you even get it in a fine nib? Knowing that you like the finer finer nibs, like, are you willing to... I don't know what I don't know what nib does it come in. It's such a it's a cool feeling pen, like no joke. It's a pretty great pen. Do you want do you want to see it? I got it right here. But see, this is the fun stuff we can do now. This is the fun stuff we can do now. Gosh, dog it. So it's it's smoother than you think, right? It, it said it has an EF. Okay, that's cool. What is mine? My, mine's a medium, I thought so. Like, I don't use it very often. It's smoother than you think, feel-wise. Right? Like, it's not as gritty. So, I'm actually going to move this because I'm afraid I'm going to drop it on one of these pins, and that would be bad. Yeah, so it's like a finish on this. I don't know when exactly they did these, but they're pretty pretty highly sought after. Um, yeah, it's just a coating. Yeah, it's just a coating. Um, it does not feel gritty at all. I won't say it feels smooth, but the grip feels smoother than you think. Maybe it's just from using it, right? And this feels a little grittier than the section. The section almost feels dead smooth. And this feels, you can tell just by my finger over it. So can you hear this? I don't, you probably can't hear that. So it's really fun to use. I enjoy it. Um, like that's about the maximum I would pay. So I think I, I want to say I did, mine was like 180, 200, maybe. I don't even remember. And it's in really good shape. So I don't know. This is one pen that I don't use enough, right? So this is part of this is going to be part of the uh, part of this whole deal we got going on up here. Like I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to rotate the pens these in to use. Whereas this one is a much bigger um, six hundred design with a lot of the 600 aesthetics and has a gold nib on it. 18 karat broad gold nib. So like this is a very different pen. And this one I'm probably gonna sell because I don't have, like I will never choose this one over this one and there's no reason for me to keep it otherwise. Other than, hey, it's cool to look at. Well, I'm trying to avoid the, the cool to look at bits. Right? Cool to look at means I need to sell it. That's the way I roll. That one is a real 600. Yeah, I guess is that the way to put it? I don't know how to... There's so many little nuances, description nuances and naming conventions that I don't know how to, to describe them. The lava one's a Newton. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. So Newton shape, traditional 600. Even says so. What's funny is they have a, a, <laughs> a size indicator. <laughs> L for large. Double broad. Oblique. Broad. Ohm. I don't know what OM is. Medium, fine, extra fine. So this one is a, what, the, what is L? What is L? So, broad. Oblique medium, I guess is the OM. Pencils that had, that. yeah, the pencils are for, yeah, that's why I'm not surprised to see it on the pencil because you can change that around. L for left, gotcha. Oblique medium, yeah, that's what I'm thinking. But like, you're not really switching around your nibs on here. You buy your nibs pretty static as opposed to like a lead indicator, which can be varied, especially if you have multiple pencils that are the same and you have them filled up with different things. So it's just kind of funny. It's kind of funny. 
Yeah, Evan's my uh, my go-to uh, Rotring uh, Q&A person if I need an answer. All right, let's give this away. If y'all saw me, if y'all saw me open this um, when I was when I was going through a bunch of stuff, this pen is hilarious, and it's getting ready to be one of y'all. So hang tight. We gotta put this stuff up too, chat. That's one of the challenges. If we're gonna abide by the box, we have to put things up, right? We have to follow some some kind of rules. We have to keep some type of organization. Now I gotta move my top five pins out of the way so I can get to the keyboard. All right, this is the silly promotional Schaefer. I'm not gonna send you the letter that came with it. The Pen Attic Schaefer. What model did we decide this was? This is a big, this is an Evan pen if I've ever seen one. The big, big Hobbit Triumph. Is this, what's this called? With the OG Pen Addict podcast logo on it. This was sent to me blindly by a promo pen company that I guess wanted me to work with them. It has never been inked up. <laughs> it's just funny. I don't know what's going on with the nib there. What's the filling mechanism? I guess it's a cartridge converter. Yeah. I have never, it's never been inked. Never been used. Oh, medium, medium nib. There you go. So yeah, this is like, there's no reason for me to keep this. Plus I would never sell it because it was given to me, right? So this is like the goat of all like giveaways. It's like tick checks all the boxes. It's fun, it's funny. Um, got a story to tell, it's quality. I don't know, let's give it away, right? Why not? I don't need this pen. I will never use this pen. One of y'all needs it. So what have, I've had this, what, for probably eight years, nine years? Kate trying to butter up the bot. So who was this again? Quality logo products. Again, I must have been sitting on this for eight years, eight to 10 years, let's say, or maybe at least nine years, given the fact that it has the original podcast logo on it. So there we go. Let's do this. This is a fun one. All right. This is what happens when Brad cleans out the closet, right? Schaefer is one of my favorite words to type now that I know how to spell it. Schaefer PA logo. All right. If a name like that, they must be quality. How is that not their, uh, how is that not their, uh, whatever, uh, tagline? All right, let's do this exclamation point raffle to win this sick Schaefer fountain pen. Sick. Quixotic Fox, 18 months of subbing. Kate, thank you for the subbing as well. I forgot to shout you out more than trying to suck up to the bot. 20 months and 18 months. Y'all are awesome. I really, really appreciate you hanging out. <clears throat> Let's do this. All right. I'm not giving you the wonderful handwritten letter that was supplied to me. This is the letter I got. But I remember this, like there was no email communication. It just like literally showed up. Why not? Gotta send the letter with it. Why? Because it's like it's like canon now. Let me see what's in here. Probably nothing. Y'all just don't uh y'all don't yell at Mandy from QLP though. I'll send the all right, I'll send the letter. Did they use the pen to write it? Definitely not. This is way too fine of a line. First of all, we wanted to say thank you for running such a terrific pen blog. As a promotional products company, Quality Logo Products sells tons of pens, and we frequently refer our customers to your blog when they're not sure which pen would be the best for them. Nice. 
To show our thanks, we had this personalized pin made up for you with the Pen Addicts logo engraved on the barrel. We hope that you enjoy it and go on to write many important things with it. We also included our mascot, Bubba, because he said he was sick of working with us and wanted to find a new best friend. But we parted on good terms, and we hope you enjoy his company. Thanks again for all you do. I don't remember getting Bubba. Bubba is this... Uh... Gosh, dog it. I think Bubba's this guy. Does this company still exist? This is what y'all need to know, what we need to know, Chad. Does this company still exist? So qualitylogoproducts.com. Let's go find out if this company is still in existence. <laughs> All right, entries have stopped. They do? Okay. So y'all go support qualitylogoproducts.com. I actually do use a, um, I use cheap for equally poorly named cheappins.com is who does my, who does my stuff. I have never laid eyes on this mascot. All right, qualitylogoproducts.com. There we go. I could do stress balls. Stress balls would work, right? They do seem nice, right? We could do stress balls. Maybe they gave up Bubba. Maybe I got the last Bubba. I mean, how is Bubba not on a stress ball? Do they do nasal aspirators? A uh, stress ball that says, where is Bubba? That's what we need. Look at all the <laughs> look at all the free advertising they're getting nine years after they sent me this pen. Sorry, Mandy, <laughs> if that is your real name. Maybe Mandy is Bubba and they left in tandem. Maybe they were one and the same and they had to go. Let's see what other free advertising we can give them. 80% of consumers keep promotional products, chat. It's facts. Facts. Oh, they're in Chicago. I mean, they're in Illinois. They should come to the Chicago Pen Show. Well, wasn't this nice of them? Do they have fountain pens? Let's check out their offerings. So, big clicks, good. Hedgehog. Y'all have lost me in a rabbit hole chat. Sorry. And y'all are just waiting for me to pick the winner. But now we're looking. Sharpies. So yeah, I actually, I do actually use, uh, uh, Bubba's listed as an owner. OMG. Um, yeah, I use, um, Cheappens.com does the Bic loaners and my Sharpies. Wow. Five pages of that. All right. I think we're done. Let's pick a winner. I did keep the pen for a long time, yeah. Drag it out more? Nah. All right, let's pick a winner. Who is it? Boo you. Buy you. You have definitely won before. By you. I am sending the letter. By you. I'm surprised you're here and not playing Destiny with all the new content. <laughs> you will enjoy this pen thoroughly. <laughs> By you too is supposed to be playing Destiny, not in this stream. <laughs> all right, you got to find Bubba. Yeah, I. I got no no recollection of of Bubba ever arriving, but again, this is at least 475 podcasts old. So, all right, email me your shipping address. We will get this on the way. What is Naughty Zoot found? Now we're talking. Hey, a hundred, you can get all the way down to $424 each. If we order a hundred or more units, y'all want to go, y'all want to go in on some, some pen attic, uh, Mont Blanc promo <laughs> roller balls.
That's amazing. <clears throat> much destiny soon? Nice. I've had to give it up pretty much. I no more time. I have run out of time for uh, games I got to keep up with, unfortunately. So I haven't played in a couple months. Mm -mm -mm. If you can only get the PA logo on top instead of the snowflake, that would be nice. We do have to talk Monaco before the weekend. We can talk. We can definitely talk. I enjoyed uh, Spain. I enjoyed Barcelona. I thoroughly. That was one of the more, after Miami, which I did not enjoy. Um, I enjoyed Barcelona. Bubba's full name is Bubba T. Stressball, please. Is that true? Is Monaco just going to be a parade? Allegedly, right? You never know. I heard there will be rain. That could be fun. Is it rain in Monaco? I didn't think it was allowed to rain. I thought there was some like government control about rain in Monaco. They they don't have that. I would figure that they did. All right. Let's see. Is that going to do it today, chat? I am wiped out. Oh, MakerBug's painting. Should we go see MakerBug? Heart and Creativity is journaling. I haven't sent it to MakerBug in a while. Doodles and drawing. Let's do MakerBug. I heard there like a big sphere over the city. Yeah, like it's Monaco, right? They don't control their own weather. I feel like Monaco. If any city controls their own weather, it's Monaco. <laughs> Just for this race week. Just for race week. Normal stream time tomorrow? Yeah, so tomorrow, let's look at this real quick. I'm thinking of taxes, that's what they don't allow in Monaco. Truth. Truth. Um, tomorrow, let's look at this. I'll show you what we're going to do. This is what we were supposed to do yesterday that I didn't have time for. And that's kind of why I bailed on stream yesterday because I didn't have time to do it right. We're going to take this bin, and this bin is pen cases, right? So in pen cases, guess what's in them? Chat, you have one guess. Guess what's in these pen cases? You only get one try. Sticky notes, correct. <laughs> we are emptying out all of these pen cases tomorrow to figure out what needs to go in here and... Um, then sorting out the rest, right? Of figuring out what needs to go in here. No, oh, I've looked through this. This pen box has been audited many times for the lost pens. They are definitely not in here. I've gone through this whole thing many times. So the thing is, spoiler alert, like I know there's some pens in here that need to go in the box. So we gotta figure out what pens go in the box, what pens get sold, and what pens get put in the cigar boxes of holding uh, for like the $50 and under pins. So this is what we're doing tomorrow. So I have the cigar boxes at the ready. Um, that's what we're going to do tomorrow. So, all right, let's go raid maker bug. They're doing some fun drawing doodles, not really zentangling, but like a more like a doodly doodly stuff. So y'all go say, Hey, thanks for hanging out. We'll be back tomorrow, 10 o'clock, uh, 10 o'clock my time. So you figure out your own time there. Bye.